Hi, I'm Margaret Martin, registered physical therapist, here with some tips on helping you age stronger with exercise. Today, what we're gonna cover is special considerations for your spine. There are many physical changes that occur to our spine as we age, and they can interfere with our ability to exercise and to be strong through exercise. So this episode, I'm going to discuss some of those common degenerative conditions in the spine, what their similarities are, their differences are, and what you need to know so that your condition or your old diagnosis doesn't stop you from living life to its fullest and exercising to your fullest. The four conditions that we're going to cover are really divided into two distinct categories. There are conditions in which flexion should really be limited. Those conditions are disc bulging and osteoporosis. And then there are conditions in which you should limit the amount of extension in your body and that's spinal stenosis and facet joint irritations. With the first condition, so let's just first talk about the conditions that where you should limit flexion. So flexion can be of your cervical spine, it can be of your thoracic spine, or it can be of your lumbar spine. In this condition, all depending on where you might have experienced a disc bulge, we know that disc bulges are, most of them, either straight posteriorly, but even more commonly is in the postural lateral compartment. Now, men are twice as likely as women to get them. Um, and so it's, but, but then there's this second condition, which is osteoporosis, women are more likely to get. But the nice thing is that if you have a disc bulge and you have osteoporosis, the recommendations that I'm going to make are the same. So that's a lovely thing. Now, those of you who've had a disc bulge, you'll know that they're extremely painful. You'll know that often you are just bending down to do something, you know, even in as, as light as tying your shoe. You might have done a little twist. Well, it wasn't just that one episode that caused your disc to bulge. It was repeated trauma, the repeated forward slouching, the repeated forward bending with your back and not with your legs that eventually caused to breakdowns of the annular rings of the disc, allowing that soft inner nucleus of the disc, which has a consistency of about toothpaste, to kind of work its way and find a path to create a bulge. And that bulge of the disc, hence the term disc bulge, or herniation, the disc is now pressing on a nerve structure, and that's extremely painful. So we know that once you've had a disc bulge, you're going to be at a higher risk of having another disc bulge because you've created that pathway for the nucleus to bulge into. Now, sleep is very restorative for all elements of our body, including our disc. So during sleep, our discs rehydrate. And in rehydrating, they create more pressure and have more, put you in a more vulnerable state to allow that nucleus to bulge. So the key thing, if you know you've had a disc herniation, a disc bulge, that you want to limit the amount of flexion, whether it's through your neck, your mid-back, or your low back, especially in the first three hours of your day. So if you love, you know, doing forward bends and your bones allow you to do the forward bends, save them for the afternoon. Save them for an evening yoga class, but do not do them do not do like a slow rounding bending motion in the early part of the day. 
So I hope that helps you understand disc bulging. Now, this I'm not diagnosing any of you. I need you to just understand, you know, if you have had a proper diagnosis, if you've worked with a professional in the past, that you are just getting a sense of, wow, I can control this through how I exercise, how I move, and when I move. The other condition that falls into the category of, of flexion being unsafe and, or unwise to do is osteoporosis. As I mentioned, women are more prone to getting osteoporosis because of menopause. So they're actually almost twice as likely to get it as men. So in the spine, osteoporosis is not felt until you actually experience a compression fracture or two. And I say that because you can get little compressions in your vertebrae and not actually feel it. Um, but usually by the time you've had a second one, you will have some form of pain. So the initial ones, sometimes people will be pain-free. So you can't trust pain for, for being your feedback mechanism as to whether or not a class is safe for you. So if you are over the age of 50 and you've, you know, you're hitting menopause and you have a family history of, men, of osteoporosis, I highly recommend that you get a baseline. I know the insurance systems are not set up for that, but if you could plead your case, this will help you know whether or not you need to make safe adjustments to your exercises that you're doing or a class that you're attending. Because we know that repeated forward bending, unlike disc, repeated forward bending at any time of the day will cause micro trauma inside the uh, bones of your spine and eventually those little trabeculae, those little cross bridges, the scaffolding inside your vertebr vertebral body, will you'll lose more and more of them and the internal scaffolding will cause the outer shell to collapse and that is how a compression occurs. So if you've been given the diagnosis of osteoporosis, especially if it's um, of your spine, you need to be immaculate about bending from your hips and your knees and not rounding through your spine, especially in standing positions. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the two conditions where spinal flexion actually feels good, but spinal extension doesn't. So the two conditions in which spinal extension is not indicated are facet joint irritation and spinal stenosis. So these are two very common degenerative conditions or changes that occur in the spine of men and women over the age of 35. With facet joint irritation, it's the easiest way to understand what it is, is first of all knowing where our facet joints are. So in the spine, they are at the back of the spine. They're little joints where the vertebrae above and below meet. And when we go into extension, we are actually compressing those little joints together. So imagine what happens if you know you start to wear down that cartilage or you have inflammation of the little uh, joints themselves. So anything that puts you into that position you're now taking those little, that little facet joint that sits, they sit on an angle, and extension causes more compression, whereas flexion opens up and gives relief. So that's, you know, if you have been told you have facet joint um, syndrome or facet joint arthritis, you are going to want to do exercises that bring you into a safer degree of flexion, of opening. It doesn't mean you have to do curling up um, exercises um, because especially if you have had the diagnosis of osteoporosis with facet joint, you have to find that sweet spot in between. The second condition that gets aggravated with extension of your spine is spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis is a degenerative condition. 
that diminishes the space in which your nerves travel. So whether that's within the spinal cord itself and or within one of the side little um, canals that they travel through. Either way, when you go into extension, you are limiting the amount of space even further and that's what causes you the pain and discomfort. It's not going to cause serious damage the way forward flexion would with um, your disc. You're not going to suddenly you know, herniate anything or break anything, but you will get increasing discomfort. And if you held it for long periods of time, you would really irritate your nerves. So that's why somebody with spinal stenosis, they might love a certain activity, but they can't afford just pain-wise to go into that extension. So they'll choose activities that bring them forward. Activities like cycling or um, certain aerobic activities that keeps them forward. The flexion moves is what opens up the canal, that opens up the space when you have spinal stenosis. So finding that sweet spot in between it, um, what, your, what allows you to keep your best and optimum alignment and that allows you to function um, so that you can keep exercising with spinal stenosis is a really important thing to learn. So if you like this episode, um, please, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, if you could hit the notification button, it'll ensure that you don't miss any future episodes. And if you're looking for a comprehensive program on aging stronger, for building stronger bones, you can go down into the description box and click there for further information. Thank you very much for joining me today and I wish you a lovely day.